Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy. Thank y'all so, so much for being here. Today's video is going to be very, very different from the regular content that I usually film on my channel because we're going to be talking hella crap about eyeshadow palettes that I regret buying. But this time with a very special guest here from YouTube, Dustin Hunter. Anastasia. In all seriousness, y'all, I just received this t-shirt in the mail from my good friend Dustin Hunter here on YouTube. He is amazingly talented. He just released a new single. This is the t-shirt from the single and in all of its like 80s gloriousness. I just love it so much. So if y'all are interested, I will link his channel right here and his music channel right here. He is amazing. Please go check him out. He's not really a guest, but he's he's my guest. He's He's my guest. Also, really quickly, before we get started, I just want to mention, as a full disclaimer, I have purchased every single one of these with my own money, with my own bank account. None of them are collaborated with and affiliated with and cahoots with in any sort of way. So I just want to let y'all know that really, really quickly. Also, I understand that makeup is subjective. Some people like things that other people don't like and vice versa. Please understand if I am attacking your brand that you like, your ride or die, it is not intended. I'm not going after you. It's just all in fun. <laughs> so if y'all want to see me talk crap about some of these makeup brands or all of these makeup brands, then please continue watching. So the very first eyeshadow palette that I sincerely, wholeheartedly regret buying is from Tati Beauty. And I think if I'm not mistaken, this is called the Textured Neutrals Volume 1 Palette. And I just want to say before we even get started, that this is in no way, shape or form an attack on her right now, her state of mind, what's going on with her life, her videos that she makes, her personal business has nothing to do with that. I'm specifically talking about this eyeshadow palette. It is definitely nothing personal. I think she's a fantastic woman and a fantastic businesswoman. We're just talking about the palettes and nothing else. So I just want to mention that before I ruffle anybody's feathers because it's not what I'm intended to do. Just talking about my own personal opinions about makeup. So anyway, when you open up this palette, this is what it looks like. I think everybody and their mama has seen what this eyeshadow palette is looking like. And I did an extensive review of this palette way back when, whenever it was released. I paid expedited shipping for it. It took about two weeks for it to get here. I think my total was like $68. And I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. This is not $68 worth of eyeshadow. I'm just being honest. This feels very Morphe to me. The quality, the textures, the way that they apply, the mattes, the metallics, the pressed glitters. The pressed glitters feel like something that you would get from a very, very generic brand. The way that the pressed glitters were marketed, the way that the sequin shades were marketed, we were made to believe, or I was made to believe, that this was revolutionary, that it had never been done, that it was some unique new formula that had never been seen before. And me as a very excited consumer, because at the end of the day, I am a consumer. I love buying makeup. It's one of my favorite hobbies to do. I was thinking that this right here was going to be game changing and it really, really wasn't. Now, whenever I did the review, I said how amazing they were, that they were a new formula that was done right. It had been done before, but it had never been done right. That was a mistalk, that was a misstep because ColourPop does it and they do it very well. So in all actuality, this is ColourPop quality, this is Mar Morphe quality, and I'm just very underwhelmed by it, unfortunately. So speaking of Morphe, let's talk about some eyeshadow palettes that I really, really regret buying from the brand Morphe. So the very first palette that I ever purchased from Morphe is the Boss Mood palette. This is the 35M palette. And I specifically went to Ulta to purchase this palette. I had originally fallen in love with these green tones that really reminded me of the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette that I could never get a hold of because it was always sold out. So I sought this palette out and I went to the Ulta and I bought it. And it is underwhelming to say the least. All of the colors, specifically the metallics, are just, they really don't pack a punch. The color story is gorgeous. Let me just get that out of the way. I love the pops of purple, the pops of green. I love the like dark chocolatey browns in here. It really is a very beautiful product placement. Whoever places these products on here needs a raise. 
they need a raise because they're the ones that actually sold this palette. Not the quality, not the marketing team, the person who laid this out gets my money. Now another Morphe palette that I really regret buying is the Morphe by Jeffree Star palette. Now this one just encapsulated me and had me. I actually watched the video that he was talking about this palette and all the colors looked so amazing. They were beautiful. The quality was very different from what Morphe had originally done. When I got this home and I started trying it out, I was like, really? Uh, hold on, you guys. Stop. Uh, pump the brakes. This is just not that great. Now, I like Jeffree Star eyeshadows. Not really crazy about the metallics, but his matte shadows, his matte formulas are very, very good. Super, super good. These are just not that great. Now, the pink here is pretty good. This green called Nate, ironically enough at this point, the green called Nate is not good at all. It's super, super patchy. Even with an eyeshadow primer or without an eyeshadow primer, it doesn't even matter. It just doesn't perform. Now this shade right here called Custom Rims is absolutely gorgeous. This shade right here called Millions is just another pressed glitter. I never even put my fingers in it. The rest of the shades are okay. They're not anything to write home about. This was a little bit more expensive than his regular stuff, not Jeffree Star stuff but stuff from Morphe. If I could have my money back for it, I would take it in a heartbeat. So the final Morphe eyeshadow palette that I really, really regret buying is called the 18T Truth or Bear Morphe palette. This is what the outer carton looks like and this is what the packaging looks like. Once again, it's that very kind of sturdy cardboard packaging that we're used to seeing at this point. And then this is what the inside looks like. And I'm just gonna be real with y'all. I am a neutrals woman. I love buying neutral eyeshadows. I like easy eyeshadows. I like flattering eyeshadows. I like a little bit of a sex appeal. I like very natural colors. It's just an easy eyeshadow look that you can bring with you anywhere and everywhere and you're going to look great. This one sucks ass. It is not good at all. The quality is subpar at best. This was a super, super gimmick. I think they, these came with three other options. So you can get, get like a purple one, you can get one with like pinks or sunsetty colors or something like that. Of course I gravitated towards the everyday like neutrals color and they're just not my jam. The metallics once again are subpar. They don't have a lot of color payoff. The mattes are decent, but they're patchy. They kind of like wisp away in a couple of minutes. They're not even there anymore. I put my fingernail on this one. This is a really pretty like plummy color and it just doesn't pack a punch. It's such a shame. Morphe is, I mean, they, they just suck ass. <laughs> they, they suck in some ass. So the next two eyeshadow palettes that I really, really regret buying are both from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And whenever I saw these released, I was like a beacon. I was like, Zzz. I had to go to Ulta. I had to go buy them. Not at the same time, of course. It was like different times, different months. Whatever month it was at that time. So the first one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette. And this is what the inside looks like. And it's not the quality of this eyeshadow palette that I really don't like. It's the color story that actually really makes me nauseated. I'm not crazy about the cooler tones. It reminds me very much of the, I think it's called the Lorac Pro 2 palette or something like that, which I never really cared for. It was nice, but it wasn't like the Pro 1 palette. It, it, it just doesn't work on my skin tone. I don't like the color story. The quality is okay. Otherwise, it's just, it's okay. It's all right. And then the second Anastasia Beverly Hills palette that I really regret buying is the Riviera palette. And this palette, when it originally came out, I fell in love with the navel theme of it. I love the material it's made of. It's very different. It has that canvasy material on top. And then whenever you open it up, I just loved the color story. In all actuality, this is a very, very similar palette to the Alyssa Edwards palette, which I know, which I love. I mean, it kind of got somewhat sad reviews, but I still enjoyed it. Alyssa Edwards was one of my favorite, is still one of my favorite drag queens out there. And I, I do like the color story. This one is just not nearly as good as the other one. The colors are very, very similar. They're not the same, but they are almost a dupe from one another. So one is a little bit more pink. One is a little bit more purpley pink. Um, the purple right here is just so, so similar. The only difference between this one and the Alyssa Edwards one is I think right here, 
is a yellow. This one right here is kind of a mustardy, it's called Cabana, it's a mustardy yellow, whereas the Alyssa Edward, Edwards one is a very canary yellow. I do regret buying it. I wish that I could have my original money back for it because those are not cheap. They're like 40 something dollars, $45 a piece or something. So, I mean, $90 for two eyeshadows that I never ever use. I could use that money right now. So the final set of eyeshadow palettes that I really, 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 really regret buying are from Fenty Beauty. And these are the Fenty Beauty Snap Palettes. So in all actuality, whenever I saw these online, I thought they were so cool looking. I was like, this is a interesting setup. It's something you haven't seen before. Everybody's raving about Fenty everything. So I'm gonna give these a try. So I picked up number eight and I picked up number two. And what I thought that you were supposed to do with these, because they're supposed to snap together, I thought that they snapped together like this to make a larger eyeshadow palette. But in all actuality, they actually snap like this, which isn't a big deal. That's okay, that's cool, it's good for travel, whatever. It took me a little while to figure that out, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it took me like 10 minutes or something. I picked up the number eight palette, like I said before, which is the Pastel Shimmers. And I also picked up the number two palette, which is these kind of cool toned neutrals. So this reminds me very much of the Viseart neutral palette apart from the purple. And I just thought it was very, very interesting online. <laughs> when I got these home, when they came in the mail and I tried them out, firstly, I started swatching these and I was like, what? what you know sometimes you got to give eyeshadows the benefit of the doubt swatching is not everything swatching does not denote how it's going to apply to your eyeballs so i was like okay you know tomorrow when i try these out or the next day whenever i try these out they're going to perform beautifully i just know it fenty you're not gonna let me down <sighs> they are horrible <laughs> they're horrible they do not perform at all. The color payoff is abysmal at best. So I tried these with an eyeshadow primer. No go. I tried them without an eyeshadow primer. No go. I tried them with an eyeshadow base like um, a glitter base. No go. I tried them with like, um, what do you call that? Makeup Forever Flash Palette. These. Finally got it to work. Only <laughs> when I applied this shade right here this like creamy, like Tiffany green color, Tiffany blue color, did it actually stick to it and only a little bit. This one did all the work. This one is awesome. If you're interested in an eyeshadow palette that is cream based, these are like oil based. These are amazing. I've had these for years and years and years and it's never let me down. I use it all the time. This is something that I would get from Dollar Tree. And my friend Dustin Hunter right here, he bought um, two as well and we kind of compared and we're talking about it. We we're gonna do a video together. We actually did a video together about these and we both hated both of them. And originally they had fantastic reviews on Sephora. Now go look at them. They don't have good reviews at all. So anyway, <laughs> that is the final set of palettes that I truly, sincerely regret buying. I hope y'all found this video enjoyable. <laughs> at the very least. Um, please subscribe. <laughs> I hope y'all found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, please give it a like and a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. It is 9.35 at night. I've been filming since 3.30 in the afternoon. My voice has had it. I am tired. So anyway, I hope y'all are having a fantastic day. No matter where you are in the world, please stay safe and stay healthy. And I'll be seeing y'all very, very soon.